them, and I am back with a slightly different type of video. So today I am going to be going over some, well, as of now, one mini game that I created using completely default programming, I suppose would be the right term. To preface this, I had a really weird nightmare that was like super, super, super vivid. And it almost felt like something I had seen in like a video game or a movie or read before because it was like that vivid. And okay, I'm sorry. Mm, goodness, got a lot of extra air today. Um, where was it? Yes, and it was just so vivid that I decided, okay, this would make a cool video game. And then I had to kind of figure out, okay, how how do I want this to function? Um, yeah, it was definitely a nightmare if you can't tell by the title of uh, this game. Goodness, my brain is slower than molasses today. All right. So let me just show you what I came up with. Ooh, I have to turn down the game noise. It's pretty loud. All right. Yeah, see, that's... I have a couple plugins installed. I think I literally have two. One of them is a parallax plugin that allows me to have that happen. Don't know if I'm gonna keep it or ever like actually go anywhere with this project other than have it be um just like a mini game test. As you see, definitely a test, like to activate it, just walk up to the cat. Find all the clues to understand the path. There you go. Look, I'm a little magnifying glass. Oh no, the timer is going down. I wonder whatever the clues could be. I made it really easy, I suppose. Like anything that moves, click on it. Found a thing. Found a thing. Found a thing. And we found a thing. And look, the torn photo piece is torn half down the middle. Obviously, I didn't like put a lot into it, but it's just a really simple hidden object game using completely default. And here, let me show you a few more endings before I get into that's not what I meant. Before I get into how I did it, so there are. Yes, there are two other possible endings, I suppose, with this. Um, one is you wait out the timer, so I'm going to stop talking so we can speed through this bit and get to the end. And we are back. Oh my goodness, I had my headphones turned up way too loud and that like jump scared me. All right, time's up. Try again. You can hit yes and it'll just go through the same thing all over again. And you can keep trying until you get it. So I'm just gonna do no. And it backs you out. And you can just click on it, to start again, or just walk away. So yeah, that is the basis for this. And now, let me walk you through the event. So, this is the first room that I did it with. Um, see, it is this one, yes. So, all I did is, oop, I forgot to open GIMP. Just have that opening in the background when I talk. So, I took this, I uh, saved the map as an image, and then I blacked Yes, hello, Gimp. Thank you. Let's see, where is it? Here it is. Ignore that. There we go. And um, I blacked out all the area around it. Because, see, here. Let me just. Yeah, so here is what I had originally. Uh, the grid is 48 by 48. That's the basic for RPG Maker for anyone who's curious. But, um,. I had this and then I 
uh, stacked the area out around it and centered it. And then I copied it again and I enlarged it, making sure that it kind of stayed within the squares because RPG Maker is a grid movement system. So I wanted to make sure that all that stood and then I would, let's see. Yes, I drew in all of these and then I copy pasted them into a different layer and I animated them. Just some simple, like three animations, like that one's tail moves, that grows and shrinks, that one sparkles a bit and the cat blinks. So yeah, that's all I did in GIMP. And then I uh, exported this to the parallax folder, making sure to put an exclamation point at the beginning because that holds the parallax still and it won't follow the player. And then I just have that as the parallax background here. Now I tried a couple different things when mapping this. Let's see, what one are you on actually? MMM side, all right. Set to, yes, see how uh, this blank one I have set to X? And then I have all these O's. I tried originally to do that and just have the player be limited to movement within here. And it kind of worked, but not really. It was really glitchy, it, like didn't want to fully work. I don't know why it just didn't. I should have maybe tried adding like a single pixel, but who knows. So anyways, I just have the um, magnifying glass player set to through. And so they can move all over the screen. I mean, if they wanted, could just go chill in the corner and completely ignore the event. But that wouldn't be very cohesive to progress. So I figured they wouldn't do that. As for all the hidden objects to find, simple event with the uh, animation I made. And then it's like control variables, yeah. Uh, the room one is just the amount of objects you found that is used by the global, well not global, common, mm, it's used by the, par there we go, the parallel event. And once this number reaches a certain number or higher, it'll be like, hey, you found everything, yay. And then it'll show music note about this item, say a little thing, play a bell, and then control switch. And that event is done. And it's basically the same thing for everything. Increase the variable by one. Play the sound. This one has the little scary noise because MC finds a mouse and who wouldn't be a little startled by finding a mouse. So let's see which one is this. This is the start event. So when we start on this map, the transfer event turns uh, this. Okay, this is very important right here, especially if you want to have multiple events on the same map. These three things save exactly where the player is on the map. So later when they finish whatever they were doing on the other map, it'll send them back to the exact same spot they left. Um, let's see, let's turn that on. And then that transfers them and those are two other events I'll get into later. Then I'll come back to that once we get there. So yeah, it starts the timer, starts the timer switch, and starts, turns the start off, because that turns this event off. Yes, all right. It, yeah, my brain slow. Anyways, this is the end of it. If you win and you get all the four hidden items in this room, you would just change this variable to the number of items you have. And it gives you the reward, plays the success noise, gives you a little exclamation. Wow, you did it, you found blah, blah, blah item. And then it fades out the screen. And then I turn through off. And then I transfer, uh, you just go to transfer player instead of there, you click there and do map ID, player X, player Y, which variable should be already pre-saved. I stop the timer and I turn all these off and then I stop the event. This is if you fail. Now I am, I have been using RPG Maker 
forever, and I didn't realize that there is a conditional branch with timer in it. I don't know if this is new in RPG Maker uh, MZ, or MZ. I really don't. I just never found it in MV. So, you know, that's there. Use it to your advantage. It's kind of necessary for most mini games. But anyways, if you lose, I have the fail sound effect times up. Option to try again. Yes, it just activates the start event again. No, then it sends you back. And once it sends you back. Yes, I turned on the fail switch. So if you fail, it stops here. It removed uh, the magnifying glass is a separate um, character. I didn't want to have to worry about without changing the images. So I just changed the characters because it's easier to fade in the screen. Uh, and this is what happens if you don't fail. So it's basically the same thing, except for this one. If you pass, you go to here, and if you fail, it brings you back to here, and you can start the event all over again. Now, I know that was probably a lot to take in, so I am going to um, walk you through step-by-step step of me actually doing this mini game. And let's see, what room should I do it in? Let's, let's do a smaller room. Let's do this room over here. Hmm. You know what, actually, let's, let's have more fun. Let's do this room up here. All right, so since I already have the uh, map saved as an image, I'm just going to use this map. So let's see, let's need a new layer. And do 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 do. I don't want to copyright it. Stop doing that. Okay. Yeah, that should be good. All right. And then I go down here and I copy this bit of the map. Now, sometimes you think things through and other times you're like, oh yeah, no biggie. I can fix that. And then, yes, thank you, Taskbar. Merge those down, and then let's raise this layer up here. All right, let's move you to about center because that makes it easier to enlarge you. I think that should be just about right. This floor makes it very hard. Oh, needs to be up one. There we go. Okay. Everything. Yes, perfect. All right. Then let's fill in this area. Yes. There we go. And then layer. Layer to image size. Now that is important for upscaling it to make sure it is the same size as the boundary. Because if you don't, it can scale it weird and it'll look slightly off in comparison to all the other ones you scaled. So it's just really important to make sure you start from the same base size. All right. See, so, yeah, this is where I started with all the other ones. All right. And then I... Ignore everything I just said. Well, in some instances, that's very good. But I am also not the brightest. So let's just do to do, do. Okay, that looks about right. Yeah, that's actually almost perfect. And honestly, there's very little like noise generated. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Make sure everything looks relatively to scale. Yeah, that looks good. All right. 
And let me check something before we proceed. This is another one I... Yeah, okay. I do have the black background on. That's what I thought. Alright, and export as. Um, ignore. All of the mess of my home screen. Uh, murder house. There we go. Yeah, I have way too many projects that I have started and... You see that's lower left? We need middle left. And never finished. Alright, then let's save this. Alright, and... Alright, let's go back to here. And let's go new. Actually, you know what? Let's make this easy on myself. Oh, this is upper left, not middle left. Goodness. What was I thinking? Come on. There we go. Sorry if I go silent, I'm like very focused. Much better. All right, and let's just. Voila. I need to label these events. Hold on. Fail. That's my dog. She is. Very vocal. Hold on a sec. I will be right back. I need to go make sh That's my dog's name. That's why I typed that. <laughs> I need to go make sure that she is doing okay. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. She's going to continue to bark. Because, okay, now she's not because I said that because, you know, that's how dogs work. But, you know, I am okay with that. Let's see. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Very easy. Let's have something on the stove over here and let's have a twinkle in the window. And something on the floor right here, and then something over there. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five. All right, perfect. And then let's see. I should probably remake these so it's really easy for you to exactly what to do. All right, so let's do start two, switch, start. All right. Okay, sorry, I had to stop that from running. So we want the player to, that's not the button. Let's have them start right here. And just because I'm lazy, I'm copying this because finding sound files, especially while recording on my laptop, kills any and all frame rate I might have. All right, and then we need to on this page. Change party member. I always, especially when I only have one, 
party member, I always add before I remove. I don't know. I don't think it would like break anything. I'm just very cautious like that. Let's see, and you set them to through, fade and screen, and then start all that. All right. Set movement root, layer, root on. Then I want to fade and screen. And then, because I am lazy, I'm going to once again copy that. I'm copying. Do you do? And then I did turn this back on, didn't I? Do do do. Yes, I did. Sorry, I muted my mic from my headset when I was yelling at my dog. So I just wanted to make sure that I turned the mic back on and I hadn't just been talking to no one. Find other clues to understand the past, it's just add text and then control timer. I have it set to one minute and then I turn on the switcher timer and turn the switch off. Voila, that one's done. All right. And then if you fail or win, let's just give you a potion. For easy sake, you won. You uncovered an old potion. Yay. And then that'll transfer you back there. Set that to zero. Good. All right. So zero, we're on zero. All right. That should be good. Then let's go to making the there, 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 there. All right. Back to GIMP. We want something on the stove over here. So let's see, what should it be? You know what? I think I need no. Tools, here we go. Game, here we go. Goodness. Tile sets. Yeah, and a bunch of the tile sets I'm using in this project are found on RPG Maker web, the forums. They're all on there. They're all available for commercial and uh, non-commercial stuff. And I... We'll link all of them in the description below. So if you see any stuff that you really like and think, oh, I want to use that in my game, just search through and I'm sure you will find it. Unlike me, who is struggling to find the most basic of tile sets. I think this is it, actually. It is not. <laughs> It is this one. Yay, we have a winner. I made a mistake when I was, um, like editing a bunch of the tile sets together with a bunch of the free assets I found. So, this one, instead of being C, is now D. And the one I edited. Let's see. All right, this needs to be enlarged a wee bit. That's a wee bit too much. There we go. No, that needs to be up in the corner. It's actually... Yeah, 
this movie. There we go. All right, and let's add some tea. Mind you, this is supposed to be like a kind of murder mystery thing. So, steaming tea in an old abandoned house should immediately set off red flags. Yeah, a uh, big important thing here is make sure that when you're copying the thing you want to animate, you take the full 48 by 48 pixel square. That way, when you do this, you can easily have it in the same place that it needs to be on the map. And sometimes it takes a little fina financing goodness, finicking to get it in the right place. Just make sure that you keep everything linked so when you move one, you move them all. All right. I want this to have some steam. So that's actually. Be like. Do do do. It's going to be like cartoony steam, you know? All right, and then let's... Do to do, do to do. <sighs> Meh. And let's keep that separate for now, because I might need to... Edit the opacity to make it more visible. Alright, then let's pop in here. And... That looks about right. Alright. The window I think I'm just going to use, honestly. Just use this sparkle that I already have. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, too. Me using assets, that is. Especially, I mean, mind you, were I actually doing this for a commercial game, I would probably put some effort into making a custom asset, but for now, we have that. See, you need one for the jar, table, and... Ooh, I have an idea for the jar. Select... Noon. Okay. Um... What did I do? You know what, actually? That works. Actually, I screwed up. Now let's fix it. There we go. Okay. Let's 
come up with a color that's just because it's easiest. Can't say that, Brian. All right. I believe those are vaguely recognizable. The there we go, much better. All right. They are too like. I'm just stop saying like. They are too noticeable. Or. Like they're too vivid, so let's just. There we go. And merge down. Perfect. And let's. Yep, okay, copy. Um, paste. Alright. Uh oh. I have goofed. I have ungoofed. I want the jar as a separate layer. That way when I move the eyeballs up and down... It's not as big of a deal. Because then the jar won't move. Alright, two, three. What opacity do I have them set here? I have them set to 25.6. 25.6. Perfect. And now let's copy the eyeballs. And then let's support that. Save. All right, that looks like it aligns pretty well. Um, for the rest of this, I think I'm just gonna use some do do time constraints. Yeah, let's leave that actually. All right, and all of them are going to say the same thing because I'm lazy. And I almost forgot the most important part the activator. guys sorry about that really weird cut um i use a microphone attached to a headset and it decided that it wanted to die so i'm not certain exactly where i left off so sorry about the weird jump and everything but i believe i was going to test play the event so yeah let's go do that and make sure it works Whoa, what did I- oh, I accidentally hit shift it up at the same time. Oops. Okay, this needs to be moved down a couple pixels. You need your speed sped up. I'm doing fine. We're doing fine. You are really hard to see. Okay, that's- Go fix uh, those guys. So let's see. Let's.
Oh, I need hard edge back on. Yeah. Oh my goodness, go straight. No. Thank you. All right, now let's try that again. Which that is what I just did is the reason why I keep everything on separate. Oh, almost got to speed this up on uh, separate layers. So that you can go back and just adjust it as you need. It's better. Still really freaking loud. Okay, I have been encountering this bug in like past, and I don't know what causes it, but I have to like spam the enter button. And it won't like let me select an event. I don't honestly don't know what's causing it. Like you saw this one. That one worked fine. So let's see if I can. Un momento, por favor. All right, let's see. What the thing is, I literally like copy pasted it. So yeah, it's just buggy. I showed you the first one. Uh, it worked fine. See, like, I'm spamming the Z. Okay, let me try enter. Oh, so it's actually on the event. Wait, let's try this one. Yeah, none. Get that me. Go back and try the first event because I did just leave this open and let my computer fall asleep while I waited for my microphone to charge. So let's see if... Yeah, it's literally just that event. Alright, bet. Let's see if I break it even more now. So yeah, I'm not 100% certain what's going on there, but it works. Just maybe, I think my issue is that I have, you know, cricket. I use a lot of the same events for all of these. And since this one was done first, it might take priority over the rest. So that's why it's being so glitchy. Um, But yeah, honestly, it works sometimes. It's a little buggy, but I suggest that if you're going to do something like that to have and just an entire list of different variables and plug it, not plugins, oh my goodness, switches, variables and switches that you use for each individual event so that they don't overlap because I'm pretty sure that's where my uh, bugs are coming from. But um, yeah. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions for any more mini games you want to see me try to create using only default RPG Maker, let me know. Yeah, thank you all for watching. Bye!